So recently I have posted a post in community tab that if you have any question for me please do ask and you have asked so many questions. So I will try to answer all the questions. Questions like what is the best career option, mechanical or IT software, what are the problems I have faced as a fraser at the starting of designing career, how to select the base plate thickness, explain use of fatigue stress formula with an example. So hey there this is Ayush and welcome you to this first Q&A session of this channel on completing 6 month of our YouTube. And here is some good news, under this 6 month our channel has been approved as a YouTube partner program as well as also get monetized and all this has been possible only because of you. So thank you so much for continued loving and supporting this channel. So the first question is from Omnesia. Do you think design engineering is a career path I should pursue? I have always focused more on mechanical side of things when I was in university and now I am working as a CNC programmer. My major was mechatronics. Although I love mechanical design, my father who is also a machinist think mechanical job are less rewarding and more tiring. He would rather I got a software job. What do you think? Yes, he is right as per now. Any kind of mechanical job are less rewarding and more tiring as compared to software job, IT software job. And now your main question is, should I pursue design engineering? So I would say no one can simply answer in yes or no, it would be wrong. Because choosing a career is so much subjective for each individual because it depends on many factors. Like your own interest, what is more important to you? doing a job that you love to do or doing a job to getting high pay and there is nothing wrong to choose one over other. So I would suggest write everything on a paper and decide by your own because it's all about you and you are special. But as you asked what I am thinking about it. So I would say in upcoming years like 5 or maximum 10 years it would be not much important in which field we work design or IT or anything, it won't be matter most. But it would be more important that what kind of work we are doing in any field plus how much expertise we have in that field. Because almost all computer based repetitive work which is totally based on any kind of software like CAD software or any coding language plus the work which is totally based on given set of instruction by someone. These kind of job will either completely replaced by any specific AI tool or this kind of work will be less rewarding no matter in design or IT software. And on other hand. The work which need multiple skills, different expertise and its personalized creativity and cannot be replaced by a AI tool or at least cannot be replaced by single AI tool. This kind of work will be highly paid no matter you are design engineer or a software engineer. So in short when you decided to choose any field make sure your work should not be based on single software skill. Your work should be based on multiple skills. Also you have to be an expert in your field. If you think you cannot be expert in particular field then do not choose that field. Choose the field where you can be an expert because the whole world is changing and focusing on expertise of each individual. The next question is from uh, I guess this is not your name but anyway the question is what all difficulties did you face as a fresher in the design engineering domain and how did you overcome from these difficulties? So many difficulties but here I want to discuss only one main difficulty and I have seen many designers face this difficulty as a fresher that designing any part which should be perfect as per the functional point of view and also should be easy to manufacture because there is no any guideline or any studies and also this is something which comes with only experience. So how did I overcome this problem? So the first thing I did is to accept that yes this is the big problem because it directly affects the manufacturing cost. Also unnecessary complicated design increases manufacturing time and also machinist hard work. And second thing I start deeply understanding manufacturing process especially machining process and not just by seeing and observing. 
I have also operated milling machine and surface grinder by myself and this gave me very deep understanding and I also felt the machinist hard work. So if you are a fraser, I will highly recommend you to learn how to operate milling machine and surface grinder at least for a week. Your design mindset will be definitely improved by 2-3 times and this is my promise. And the third interesting thing I did is that I started the designing any part in the exact same way in which the part supposed to be manufactured. So what I mean to say, let's say we have to design this very simple part. So as a fraser, what I was doing is first make the sketch and extrude it. As I have learned the CAD software, but I changed my habit to this. First I will make the block. As we first take the raw material, and then I will choose drill from hall wizard, a standard drill size, not any random diameter. Because you can machine any random size over the sub, but making a non-standard hole is too much difficult. So I cannot design anything which would be difficult to manufacture. And this is how I learn anything, deeply understand it, feel it, and then bring it into the habit. Next question is from Leila that I want you to give an example of fatigue stress formula use. Uses. Okay, so let's say we have a single stage spur gear box. Means every gear tooth is going under load once at every rotation of gear. So there is a time variant cyclic load over the teeth. And anything which goes under cyclic load, there can be a fatigue failure. So we can use fatigue stress formula to predict that after how many cycle gears can undergo fatigue failure or to determine maximum allowable stress level or we can say allowable stress amplitude in gears that gears can withstand for a specific number of cycle before it fails due to fatigue. And we can use this formula that allowable stress amplitude is equal to material endurance limit into under bracket 1 plus fatigue strength coefficient into log of number of loading cycle. Where material endurance limit is the stress below which it will not fail even under infinite number of cycle. For example, if the gear is made of hardened steel, endurance value would be 300 megapascal to 1000 megapascal or more that we can check by the lab test. And fatigue strength coefficient for hardened steel would be 0.1 to 0.2. These are the standard data. So if the number of cycle is given, we can calculate allowable stress amplitude and vice versa. And we use this data to ensure the component's loading is fall within the safer limit. To prevent the failure. Next question is from Timote Test. I'm not sure this is your name or it's just a username. Please excuse me for this. And the question is, if MI use a servo motor for a belt conveyor, is motor power selection procedure the same as the induction motor procedure? I would say conveyor system mechanical parameters like force, speed or torque calculation will be same for all types of motor, whether it is servo or induction or stepper motor. Because mechanical parameters are the input parameter and you just have to select a motor which can satisfy these parameters, this mechanical parameter. But for the same mechanical parameters, motor selection procedure can be different. Like in servo motor, there is nothing like numbers of pole or VF tape as in induction motor. The operating principle is different. So if you want a dedicated video on it that how to sizing the servo motor, please let me know in the comment. I can make a separate video on it. Next, Jay Panchal is asking, make one industrial project from concept to final. GDNT with a bill of material. Of course, why not? This is the main theme of this channel. We will do so many industrial projects from complete concept to final design. Also, we will do every calculation completely step by step. Plus, we will also do the all the GDNT drawings. But, <laughs> but I'm just slow. The one day should not be 24 hour. It should be 48 hour for me. Next question is from Machine Designer. Next Machine Designer. I'm sorry brother, I cannot find your name. Anyway, you are asking a video on configuration setting. 
I guess you are asking how to do the configuration of the part or assembly in a CAD software. But I personally don't want to make software tutorial video because there are already so many pet courses and also so many YouTube videos. But it's okay, I will bring some, but it's okay, I will bring some specific tutorial like this or I have also learned something very cool things. So I will definitely bring it like design custom property in tab builder which automated my some process in solid work like automatic fill the drawing title box and linked to generate auto detailed BOM. Next question is from Sandeep. How to choose thickness of machine base plate? Yes, this is the one of the most asked question on this channel. But there is no any formula or guidelines to share. But I can tell you what are the factors I am considering in base plate thickness selection. But these are not in order. I select the thickness from mainly three point of view. One, from raw material point of view. Like how much material thickness will be need to remove by grinding to completely eliminate the raw material bending. Also how much material removal is required to achieve the required flatness. And it's all depend on plate's length and width. And if the plate is more than a meter, you can split the base plate for easy machining. Second is from strength point of view that how much load is over the plate or is there any pressing load over the base plate. Like let's say this is a press but the pressing load is an internal force. There is no pressing force over the base plate. Only weight of press is there. So you don't have to take a thicker base plate. I hope you got my point. And to strengthen the base plate you can increase the supports beneath the base plate which is more economical choice instead of increasing thickness of plate. And in heavy vibrational case it is better to use casted base plate instead of taking huge thickness base plate. And things changed in vibrational condition because in case of vibration strength doesn't matter most. The natural frequency of the base plate matters and we optimize the design of base plate using FEA analysis. So as I said I have no any perfect order but if you want a perfect workflow then let me know in comment I can make a video on it. Next Amul Giri asks press tool die design video. I don't have deeper experience in tool and die design. So as of now I cannot help on this but in future I will definitely make a video on it. Next. Jack and Tushar asked for GDNT videos. Yes, definitely complete GDNT series will be on this channel very soon. We will start this just after this bearing series. Next, Bhusan asked any course you can recommend to do for mechanical design engineer for advanced knowledge in automation. Also, please make a video on impact load calculation. Your videos are very knowledgeable. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thank you so much Wusan. Thank you so much too. I tried but I haven't found any dedicated course on automation for mechanical engineering. So in future if I found any course I will recommend you. Or maybe if in future if I will plan to make a course on it I will definitely let you know. Impact load calculation video. Yes very good idea. Yes for sure I will make a video on it. And the last question is from Arun Singh the lecture on bearing selection. Of course, of course just after this basic bearing series we will start bearing selection series in too much detail. And as per now the angular contact bearing detailed video is just coming. And that's it for this Q&A section and wish you happy Diwali or happy Deepavali whatever you are saying. Thank you so much for the watching.